Hi, I'm GM Matthew Sadler. Welcome to this report about my very first shogi tournament. Um, yeah, so, um, well, first shogi tournament I took part in, um, it was actually the Austrian Championship in uh, Vienna, held at uh, Kultur Café Krimhild. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, seven rounds, uh, 30 minutes plus 40 seconds by Omi. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, I have to say I had a, I had a wonderful time actually. Yeah. Really friendly people. Um, very nice venue. I mean, Vienna is a lovely city. Uh, we had some very nice food and, uh, I mean, really loved playing shogi. Um, I mean, the tournament itself was, was pretty strong. Um, it was led by, um, uh, um, a couple of, uh, three Dan players. Um, that's, uh, Marco Dietmeyer, um, and Thomas Pfaffel. And uh, and then a one a one dan player uh, Andreas Neumeyer, um, and then a uh, you know a, a variety of other good players about I think twenty twenty five people in total so uh, you know good turnout. Um, yeah, I was a bit unsure you know as to my strength. I estimated it around uh, four or five Q. Um, that was kind of what I thought. Um, so you know not um, not fantastic, but not too terrible either. Hopefully, and uh, yeah, you know, you know, you always hope that uh, maybe, who knows, maybe you're better than you think. Although uh, I think, in general, uh, you know, normally you know uh, just about what your strength is. Um, so I mean, I, I had, uh, yeah, the first round unfortunately didn't turn out to be a, a fairy tale start. Um, it was a, a well, a, <laughs> a quite uh, amazing game in in many ways. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I started off attacking and then, um, I got, um, I got attacked, but I'd, uh, I had, you know, sort of, uh, foreseen it somehow. I'd, uh, got a good, uh, way for my king to escape and I thought it was all, all gonna go fine, but, uh, somehow the biome, which I found incredibly stressful, um, um, in the biome, I, uh, I really lost my way and, um, and deservedly lost, you know, although it was a, it was a great game all the way through. Um, uh, Natasha was playing as well, and she actually won her first game. And bizarrely enough, um, it was it was also a topsy turvy game where uh, she was uh, um, attacking, and uh, and then it went to Biomi. Oh, all right, I'll uh, I'll let I'll let Natasha tell you how it all went. So we're talking with Natasha just after the game. Natasha, you look quite pleased. Uh, tell us what happened. I'm a wreck, actually. I was just playing. An unrated, <laughs> the bottom seed in the tournament, <laughs> and the game went went um, went the full distance. It was uh, so we we had thirty minutes and then forty seconds by Omi, and we were in by Omi for a long, long time. And uh, oh gosh! Anyway, the <laughs> the main point is it's it's a, it's a very good win <laughs> because. <laughs> Because I was playing against a chess grandmaster, <laughs> oh. soon to be a shogi grandmaster, <laughs> yeah. and I might as well get this win while I can. <laughs> so, yeah, Master Matthew Sadler, Indeed. he thought if he was playing shogi, <laughs> no being a chess grandmaster, <laughs> if they won. <laughs> but he was wrong. God, was because a, they do. It was still, a, it, was a tough, it was a very tough game. It was game. a tough game, yeah. I mean, yeah. But, but I think you, you were attacking. Lots you were attacking them. all the time somehow. It. Uh... Yeah. Well, it was. It was a, like one of those classic chess ones. So, so Matthew started with an attack on the wing, and I did an attack in the centre, and then, and then I did an attack, a sort of attack. In chess, you'd call it the rook's file, but actually the lance file attack at the far end of the board. And that was very unclear, and we, and there were lots of pieces exchanged on that file. Yeah. But and then king... Matthew's king decided to run, so he ran right to the other side of the board. Yeah. I thought I was, I, and... I was going to be safe. I never got, I never got yeah. to, to attack your king. Well, somehow. it was all very unclear the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. so my attack was kind of just throwing lots of pieces in at the king, and yeah. Matthew's attack was just a few pieces, but against my. And yeah, but, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I, I, I it was chaos. Yeah, I felt I was always on the on the worst end of it somehow, and uh, yeah, I mean at the end I played those two horrible that bishop drop and the bishop ah it was awful ah, oh yeah, that yeah, just wasted yeah. so much time was, I, was, I was getting it a was bit, a bit quiet wasn't yeah it was a bit it? quiet i needed yeah. to do something 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 uh but it's hard in that volume you've got like 40 seconds of yeah. move and yeah. every single move has to be 
kind of keeping the initiative. Where's the end game, isn't it? So you're really, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you kept on. I thought you were going quite slowly towards my king, but I couldn't really see anything to do with it. Well, it was kind oh, of. Dear. It was slow, but there were. I had quite a few of those generals. The trouble was they kept tripping over yeah. each other. Yeah. But finally, I managed to redeploy them yeah. all backwards a bit to go yeah. forwards. Yeah, again. that's right. It all. Oh well, well done, Natasha. It's, Thank um, you. I'm. Uh, yeah, you were talking yes, that you were. The tournament's it, fine now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Grand very much. Right, let's have a quick little look at this game then. Natasha Sente against Matthew Gote. I've got the first 60 moves anyway before um, uh, time shortage and uh, Biomi panic uh, set in. Um, and uh, well, there was something uh, you know quite uh, quite funny about the whole thing as well. So uh, um, we'll just uh, show you anyway the opening moves. So Natasha likes playing fourth file rook and... Uh, um, I quite like playing third file rook, uh, I have to say. So um, we both did our favourite stuff. I think we've had we've had a number of games in this um, uh, in this type of structure. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think honours are, are generally even. Um, it's um, we always have very fraught games. You know, that's the uh, that's the thing. So uh, it's never clear who's going to win until the, the very final moments. Um, so yeah, I mean, I set up my my half Mino and Natasha sets up her full Mino. And, uh, well, Natasha's plan always seems to be just to uh, push forward her sixth and seventh file pawns, assisted by a silver, and she always manages to get an attack. So the one thing that I did, uh, my special preparation for this game, was actually to leave my king on 7-1 so that it would be ready to run to the other side if necessary. Yeah, that's experience for you. So, um, uh um, and I'm not sure, I don't know how, whether this plan is any good at all, but, um, it always seemed, uh, quite interesting to me, you know, just to, uh, to move this second file pawn and, uh, and, uh, you know, activate, make some use of that rook on, um, uh, on the fourth file. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I mean, the game proceeds pretty much as we often do. I created a, a pawn in hand there. I'm not quite sure whether that's, uh, Good or not, but it felt vaguely reasonable. And uh, I guess the next step will be probably to uh, to try and do uh, uh, an edge attack and, um, well, and just see basically how it goes. So Natasha um, did something, I'm not sure we've had this before actually, that she's done it so quickly, but it's uh, looks like a pretty decent idea to me. So um, uh, at the very least getting a pawn in hand and also bringing that silver in dangerously. Uh, I've known Natasha simply to take the pawn and then just to sacrifice the silver, um, just anyway. Um, but in this case, she just retreated, and she's getting ready to um, uh, to push the edge pawn. So I played this move, which I thought was quite cunning. Really, it uh, takes control of a lot of um, squares um, around the um, uh, well around my king's position, and also solidifies the center. So my king will be ready to escape by 6251. So, um, no, I was pretty pleased. I was pretty pleased with that. I also thought it uh, consolidates my position quite nicely. Um, and then Natasha played played this move. And uh, the funny thing was, was that um, when the plane on the way over, Natasha said to me, um, you know, had a very busy time at work. So uh, she hadn't really had time to, uh, to look any at any shogi recently. So, you know, could I uh, show her some stuff? So I've been looking at um, quite a few examples from um, this At A Glance series. I'm sure you know which one I mean. It's the pocket sort of size series with, um, you know, about a couple of hundred of, uh, of examples, you know, based around typical themes. And um, I got the Edge, uh, edge Attack At A Glance book. And uh, you know, there were lots of nice things. And um, as I uh, told Natasha, the key always was you push, you drop and you dangle, which essentially means that uh, you push like this. You drop, and uh, if I took that with my lance, then you'd dangle a pawn on uh, on nine two behind the uh, the lance. So I was a little bit uh, put off. I have to say that uh, you know Natasha was doing this against me when I'd shown it to her on the plane the, the night uh, the night before, and uh, well, she was obviously enjoying it because she was uh, um, she had a, a little grin on her face when uh, when she was doing it. But of course, the point is she has a pawn short here, so there's no dangling on nine two. Well, there wouldn't be if I hadn't. Um, uh, suddenly got it into my head that I was going to uh, to get my edge attack going on the other side. 
It's one of those things of disconnected thinking um, that, uh, you know, you've got, um, uh, you're thinking about something, you've got it all covered. And then all of a sudden you think, hey, yes, but, uh, you know, I could improve things. I could uh, make sure that I get uh, this move in for myself on the way. But of course, you know, after after doing this, that gave Natasha a pawn to dangle behind my um, uh, behind my lance. I don't know how serious this is, you know, uh, whether it's a, you know, a bad position for me or just normal, but certainly from a practical point of view, I went a little bit bananas here, really. Um, I think I, um, I was a bit upset at myself for, um, just for giving this pawn away and giving Natasha this, uh, this move. And I just, I felt I just had to show that I hadn't missed it, that it was all under control. And, um, yeah, you know, you get like that sometimes. I think it's, uh, that's unfortunately, that's the, uh, the chess player part in me that, um, uh, you know, I feel the need, you know, I'm a strong chess player. I, I feel the need to show that I've seen it all. Even when, of course, in Shogi, I just haven't, of course. And I moved my king here, which, um, from a practical point of view, I think was a very bad move. And, uh, simply because, you know, I'm putting my king back in the, uh, in the path of danger and just for, you know, just for a pawn or, a, or a token, you know, it's, it's, it's really not worth it at all. And uh, it just makes things a lot more complicated. I've just got to look at, you know, to, to, to uh, calculate a lot more danger. Whereas, you know, if my king was on the other side, that would be, uh, that'd be much easier from a practical point of view. Anyway, uh, so Natasha took there. I took, put a pawn, she put a bishop in the way. I mean, uh, Natasha will just start attacking and keep on attacking. So, uh, you know, I was already regretting having my king, uh, having my king there. I dropped a silver on here. And this is where my score ends. Um, it's um, I can't really remember. I mean, I know I I, I took a bishop, and uh, but Natasha broke through somehow on the edge, and, uh, and my king rang all the way to um, uh, to three two, and I had I picked up a fair amount of material. So you know, I sort of thought uh, I was probably going to be doing okay, but um, but actually, um, uh, what actually happened was that Natasha took my knight on eight one, and then um, thanks in part. Uh, to the uh, to the uh, to my uh, edge attack uh, earlier with uh, you know pawn one um, pawn one five Natasha got this beautiful square on um, on one six to drop a knight attacking my rook on um, on uh, on two four and then after she dropped a silver on there as well as a follow up uh, on the on uh, on two four and uh, start an attack on uh, on the wing where my king had escaped. And uh, I mean, it was it was all very unclear, but somehow in Biomi, uh, she just uh, her, her pieces advanced very, very slowly, but very effectively towards my king. And I lost. So there we are. That was uh, that was our game. Um, but quite, uh, quite, quite, uh, quite funny, you know, really, that I'd, uh, I'd shown Natasha all that stuff um, and then she used it against me. But it wasn't only against me. Because in the next game against a uh, strong player, one Dan, uh, and Andreas Neumeyer, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, um, Natasha did this. So this is the round two game that Natasha played. So Natasha is uh, Gote and Andreas was Sente. Andreas Neumeyer was a one Dan player, came third in the tournament, uh, I think. Um, so, um, Andreas had played a, um, a quick Ishida attack, I believe, and, um, uh, he also did the same, uh, against me, so it seems to be one of his, uh, favourite ideas. Um, and, uh, well, we joined the position after, after 47 moves. Um, yeah, it's all, all quite, um, all, everything still to do. Uh, Andreas has set up a, um, a, uh, an Anaguma castle. So, um, um, what did Natasha do? Well, this is where, where Natasha got attacking it. And I thought it was well worth, uh, well worth showing how it happened. So Natasha pushed the pawn first of all, just get her silver involved. So very similar to what, uh, what she did against me, of course. Um, a bit of strengthening took place and the silver moved over to the second file. So now you can imagine that a, um, um an edge attack is going to happen. There's, uh, two pawns in hand. Um, Andreas played um, played this uh, this lance move, getting out of the um, getting out of the bishop's uh, uh, diagonal, uh, just in case it ever decides to promote, and looking as well to uh, to push the uh, the sixth file pawn to uh, um, well start making inroads on the uh, on the goate position. Natasha played the uh, the bishop here as well, 
um, strengthening the attack, of course, by attacking the um, the one seven point, and it all starts. So um, uh, this annoying little move here, just uh, pushing the uh, the gold back and then bringing the knight into play, and of course uh, you see there the value of that uh, lance nine eight move before, but just getting out of the uh, capture of the uh, of the bishop. But Natasha was not scared and started her um, her wing attack, her edge attack rather. And she's got three pawns in hand, so you know what she's going to do. So this one was dropped. And then this one was dangled. Yes, the old one, two, three that we've been talking about in the flame and that I got as well. So it's quite a nice move in actual fact. It just means that um, um, that when... Uh, Gote captures this pawn on uh, on one six. Sente will not be able to drop a pawn on uh, on one eight, uh, which is you know, a very typical way of defending. So there we are. Natasha's now got two pawns in hand. It's amazing. I have the feeling that she's given away loads and loads of pawns, and somehow still seems to have two in hand. So um, uh, Andreas took the uh, the silver, and then another pawn drops. So it's it's actually dropping the pawn. Uh, that's the idea, dropping the pawn where the um, uh, where the opponent wants to drop. So um, I guess that uh, um, if uh, Natasha had taken the lance, that Andres would have just dropped a pawn there. So you drop a pawn here in order to prevent that. It just loosens, uh, yeah, loosens the uh, uh, Sente's king's position a bit. So there we are, took and took. And then yet another pawn drop, just to stop uh, Sente from um, from uh, um, from ever dropping a pawn on uh, on uh, on one seven again. So the king went out of the way, and then the lance uh, dropped in. So um, uh, I think that at some stage here, um, uh, Andres might have dropped um, a lance on here, which might have been. Uh, uh, slump somewhat annoying for um, for Gote because uh, um, well it looks like um, like you, you're really going to be able to destroy that uh, bishop which I think is you know in this case it's a, it's a, a very useful um, uh, attacking piece uh, but Andres went here and um, Andres did drop the lance um, yeah I don't know whether whether he might have taken the bishop in between but um, anyway this happened. Lance is dropped everywhere, and then this lance drop. I like that one very much. Just behind the silver, and uh, obviously preparing the um, uh, the pawn to uh, to advance there. So um, yeah, I mean the uh, and the game continued. Um, it went on for another for another uh, seventy or eighty moves, probably even more than that, because uh, at the end, Andreas asked me if I could uh, record the game, and uh, I did up to a point until I, I pressed the wrong button on his application and uh, and exited instead of um, instead of uh, inputting a move. But, um, but it was a crazy game. Um, I imagine, yeah. I mean, uh, I think at some stage Natasha was probably uh, was probably winning. Uh, but somehow uh, Andreas was uh, amazing at keeping cool in uh, in Biomi, and uh, he um, uh, he won the game eventually. I think in kind of a balanced position, maybe, or maybe it was starting to get better for him when uh, Natasha left her uh, her king in check. But um, a great game, and uh, yeah, I mean a lovely uh, a lovely demonstration of uh, of edge pawn drops. And uh, as I said, really funny that we uh, we just looked at this in the uh, in the plane uh, the night before. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, well, maybe the next uh, the next one will be uh, an, uh, uh, will be one of my games. Maybe maybe a good one from me. Vienna on the fourteenth of September. Matthew, how has the first day of your first Shogi tournament gone? Well, it's been a roller coaster ride, ups and downs, I think you'd say. So uh, the first round was a bit tough. I'm going to be hearing about that one for the rest of my life. 
life. Yes, a lot in the tank to everyone. But got uh, thoroughly beaten. Uh, well, it was a great game, um, but, uh, but I, was, uh, I was definitely uh, uh, suffering all the way, I think. Um, then I beat uh, a 4Q, yeah, I think. It just uh, looked, felt quite smooth. And then oh, I played a 1Q, and um, I was doing really well ahead on time, but somehow, yeah, towards the end of the game, I lacked that sort of power, you know, sort of knowing how to do it. But I think I learned about it for the... Um, uh, for the last game, because I, um, uh, what I was doing a lot better there was doing the pawn drops, getting his pieces loose, and only then dropping my my major pieces with tempo, and that you know the attack just went like crazy simply. Um, so yeah, no, I mean I'm uh, I'm I'm happy. I'm having a great time. I'm loving it. I have to say, and uh, and uh, play some, some had some great games, you know. So uh, and uh, that one point behind Natasha. So uh, it's all to play for tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. <laughs> Here is my round four game against uh, Andre Trauner. And uh, um, I am Sente and uh, my opponent is Gote. Um, actually, I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about Andre because uh, uh, he turned out to be a pretty cool guy. But this time he was my victim in uh, in round four of, um, uh, of the uh, Austrian Open Championship. So, um, um, well, the early part of the game had been uh, punctuated with some bishop drops, which uh, had, uh, well, they'd given me rather more, I think, than uh, than my opponent. And um, in general, I felt uh, that I should be doing very, very well in this position. Um, but that's never really a guarantee for, uh, for final success. Um, so I started off in this position um, uh, with this move which I think is a very chessy move. I don't know whether it's a, um, a good shogi move. Um, normally what happens is when I play a, a sort of a slow move with a big piece like that, um, something just gets dropped and uh, and hits me and then it has to move away. But uh, in this case, I didn't think that was possible. So um, it's quite a, well, I mean, I, I thought it was a nice idea. I mean, it attacks that, obviously that silver on, um, on five, six, um, and it also um, creates a defensive path, you know, heading back towards the king. So um, if ever um, the silver moves out of the way and the gold catches the rope, then my um, then my horse there is always uh, helping to protect the king. So advanced, and now I was I was quite pleased with myself with the way all this happened because, uh, um, yeah, I mean, um, what I've sometimes got the tendency to do is just to uh, to drop my heavy pieces in and then just sort of try and break through somehow and here I managed to use some uh, some pawn drops just to uh, to loosen up the uh, the opponent's position so um, uh, we took we got there and then I did this pawn drop uh, which actually was um, slightly influenced by my game against Natasha uh, the, the last biome part of it um, because I suddenly thought after the game that um, um, if I'd wanted to um, uh, to drop a pawn somewhere to uh, to defend my uh, uh, my king's position, then well I needed to have given away the uh, the pawn in front of it. So um, this was you know partly an attacking move of course, but it also gave me the possibility of dropping a a pawn on um, on uh, a four nine for example, you know just to um, uh, yeah just to add some extra defence if required. But uh, but this was uh, um, felt very pleasant anyway. You know, putting a knight on uh, on this square. Um, so Andre retreated, and then I took the gold, um, and then played this move, which I thought was uh, was quite neat too. Uh, the idea is that when the gold takes it, I uh, drop my rook in with gain of tempo. So uh, so I felt I was doing. Uh, very well here and I, I don't know I was quite happy with all these uh, pawn drops again they're not stuff you get in chess of course so um, uh, they're sort of dropping pawns in from nowhere so um, yeah it just felt uh, I felt a little bit like a shogi player when I did it and then uh, gold here uh, yeah I mean the reason I dropped the gold on on that square um, is also I'm attacking this pawn on 4-3 so uh, you know if I drop a if I can manage to drop something on uh, uh, that attacks 4-3 as well, then uh, I will actually just be threatening to take it because obviously the uh, the gold on 4-2 is uh, is pinned. We got this one. I dropped the bishop. Um, yeah, again, I, I, I quite like that move. I'm attacking that uh, promoted uh, silver on uh, on 5-7 and, um, and also threatening, of course, to take the silver on 3-3 and then just crash through. Um, here I made use of that uh, of that horse. Coming back to defend my uh, my king, 
uh, the rook blocks and then this gold and I've got this uh, again this double threat that I talked about I'm attacking the um, obviously the silver on 3-3 but I'm also threatening to take on 4-3 uh, because the uh, the gold on 4-2 is pinned and here Andre took my gold and I delivered checkmate by promoting my rook so uh, no I mean nothing uh, nothing very special of course but ah uh, oh, it was a nice way to uh, to end the day at any rate and uh, it's one of those you know I, I think if uh, I think that shows you know one of the uh, the big attractive points of uh, of shogi is that even if you're not a very good player like me then um you know from time to time you can uh, just get things together and you finish with a mating attack you know which is uh, you know always a, a source of uh, of great pleasure you know however correct it's uh, it's or, or well executed it's been so that was it. Um, I'm just going to tell you a, a little bit uh, um, about tonight, about the, the, the evening after the game, because that was very nice as well. So this is a very nice picture after round four. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I said that the, uh, the tournament was very friendly and everyone was very welcoming. And, uh, well, in the evening... Um, after the fourth round, uh, quite a few of the players went to a, a lovely restaurant and had plenty of, uh, of great food and, uh, as you can see, quite a bit of very nice beer. And we played all sorts of games, uh, chess variants. And, um, well, one of them uh, was uh, Chinese chess, um, which, uh, uh, which was good fun, but this was the amazing one. It's called Chu Shogi. And, uh, my fourth round opponent, Andre Trauner was at the center of it. I mean, he brought the, uh, the Chinese chess set and he also brought this Chu Shogi set, which he had made himself. Um, you know, by, uh, by actually, I think, you know, drawing the, um, the symbols on, on cellophane and then adding them to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to, to blank. To those blank uh, pieces of wood in order to make the pieces. I mean, Chu Shogi is amazing. So it's on 12 by 12 board. There are many, many different pieces, all of them with beautiful names like lions and leopards and drunken elephants. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the weird thing is that there's no drops, um, unlike normal Shogi, but, um, but every piece promotes to something different. Um, the lion is the most amazing piece because, um, actually just like the, uh, the king in the uh, chess variant, monster chess, it can make two moves, uh, to the opponent's one. So, um, it's a, a very unpleasant piece that can uh, very easily take pieces and then move back out of uh, harm's way. Um, I mean, Andre explained it to us. I have to say my, you know, it, after hearing all the pieces explained, um, I'd forgotten everything more or less by the time we started. Um, but the, um, the strongest player in the tournament, uh, Marco Dietmar, who finished second in the tournament, um, he seemed to, seemed to be barely listening to the explanation actually, but picked it up incredibly and was soon playing a, a very exciting game with, uh, with Andre. It was quite amazing, I have to say. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty tempted, but, uh, but maybe I should just try and, uh, focus on getting a bit stronger at, uh, at normal shogi before trying to do this. Um, the last day began on Sunday. Um, there wasn't much glory for me. Um, I won my fifth round game, which was quite nice. Uh, brought me to three out of five. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and then uh, I lost my last two games. So I lost to the winner, Thomas Faffel. Uh, quite an exciting game. I think I was doing uh, decently for uh, for a while, attacking at least, but ended up getting confused and uh, and losing all my pieces. And uh, then I lost to the one down player that had beaten uh, Natasha in the uh, second round, Andres Neumeyer. Again, uh, quite an eventful game. Um, spent way too much time in the opening. Got into Biomi. Seemed to be doing actually quite well. Maybe I was even uh, doing really well at one stage. Um, but then panic set in. I uh, At one stage, I um, um, I just gave away my um, um, a bishop for uh, for nothing. And um, uh, and then amazingly, you know, just with Shogi, with a few pieces, I launched a desperate attack and uh, and it looked very, very dangerous. But I was one short, one square short of genius and um, and lost that. But, uh, you know, great fun game. Um, so there we are. I mean, that was the tournament. It was uh, I mean, I have said to, you know, congratulations to Thomas Faffel for winning the tournament and uh, to Marco Dietmeyer and uh, Andres Neumeyer for um, uh, for picking up the medals. And a very big thanks, you know, to uh, to everyone for being uh, so welcoming and so friendly um, and speaking English to us all the time. Um, and especially, you know, thanks to, to Andre for uh, this amazing demonstration of, uh, of Chu Shogi. 
Um, so there we are. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely want to play some more tournaments. Had a wonderful time. And, uh, and, you know, any chess players out there, you know, I mean, do give Shogi a go. I think you'll, uh, I think you'll love it as much as, uh, as, uh, as we do. It, it's a wonderful game. Um, so there we are. I mean, keep posted for, um, for any new videos. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't. And, uh, well, there's going to be probably some more Shogi videos. I'm definitely going to play another tournament, I'm sure. And, uh, there'll also be our normal chess content as well. Okay. Thanks very much for listening.